Welcome back, everybody, to Organically Blunt. I am Jay Blaze, your host, and this evening I have the pleasure and the opportunity to speak with Josh from Yellow Skunk Farms. And we want to answer that question that everybody was asking, what was those jars in your garden? Because that's what attracted me to wanting to interview you. Is oh, well, like, what, I'm like, what is this guy got going on? You know, my grandparents, they, they'd bury mason de- jars, but usually they were full of money or something, you know, and <laughs> you, you got them indoors in your, in your living soil bed. That is just absolutely impressive, by the way. And let's hear more about this. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, well, I guess that's, uh, I guess I could say that's my granddad's last gift to me. You know, he used to he used to push a lot of stuff down the hill. We we live on this hill slope here, and on a on a nice freshwater reservoir, and it really slopes down really hard at one spot here. And he used to just take his tractor, and I can remember all the time he used to just push stuff down the hill. You know, and he would be working on a shed, and he would throw a glass jar, you know, down the hill. Most of them I found are like old Seven Up jars. He used to have these little old school seven up jars you know the little green ones you know that you could yeah. real short ones and i guess he used to just chuck them things down the hill when he was working out there and uh used to be a bunch of peach trees out there you know and everything he used to be working on and stuff and yeah that's that's basically where those jars came from i was just walking through the woods cleaning up really i'm trying to clean up this everything around here and uh yeah i came across it and it was just laying there in the woods and uh, I was like, holy cow, man, look at this. This is awesome. I was like, it's literally a natural terrarium right here in the ground, just full of, I mean, worms and just God knows what, just all kinds of cool stuff. And I found actually five of them. Three of them are uh, pretty big, you know, the big jars, but they had, most of them have cracks in them, you know, on the side, which allowed that that soil and, and that moisture and everything to get in there and, and, and grow. And I, I guess they've been down there probably 75, 80 years, you know, down there, you know, he, he passed away in 2015. That's been nine years ago now. So, uh, but like I said, he built this house 1948, 49. Uh, okay. So I'm imagining that's when, that's when everything was going on around here. Everybody, you know, was just around here building the house, building the sheds, building the garage and just, you know, throwing all the trash down the hill. You know, there was no dumps back then, you know, there was no place to take the trash. So they just pushed it down the hill. And so oh, I'm stuck know, here. Huh? Go ahead. I, I know exactly what you're talking about there because I grew up on a gas pipeline. I, I, our farm did and people used to go go down the gas line because it was like a dunes and yep. they go down there with their pickup trucks and they'd they dig holes and they just dump the trash right there and it's just like oh and and then 50 years later you find the stuff it starts to surface up and it's like oh wow okay that's it that's it yeah i found it and you know i was just like holy cow you know I, and when i pulled it up i was like I was really careful with when I pulled it up and when I pulled it up, you know, I was just like, holy cow, there's so much life underneath this jar here. I was like, that just saw a light bulb went off in my head. And I was just like, you know, this would be really cool if I just stuck this down in the bed and allowed that there's organisms and worms and everything else that's already in the bed, you know, just come to it, you know, just like they do, you know, anywhere else, you know, that, that, I guess that jar holds that moisture underneath of it, and that's where everything goes. So it just kind of like a light bulb moment, you know. I just stuck it in there, and it was cool. I liked it. It looked cool, but also served a purpose as well. Definitely. So, but, yeah. I, I, it caught my eye. You know, I'm scrolling through Instagram, and I'm like, hold up. This guy's got mason jars <laughs> half, yeah. half buried in his living soil bed, and I'm like, what is this? And and then that intrigued me to I messaged you and ask you. And I was like, okay, we got to hear how this guy thinks because he's bringing all, excuse my French, but we say everything on the show. I said, he's bringing all that shit from outside in the woods in his house. I said, he does realize there's bugs and shit in there. I'm like, 
this man's got this shit in his house. I'm like, I got. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I'm into that stuff too, you know. But I'm like, you know, I gotta hear what your mindset is. So, I, I was trying to gonna, I was gonna bring up some pictures here of your, of your garden. I'm, I'm gonna try to figure out how to do it here. And um, what I want to do is I want to show everybody. Um, if I can figure it out here, I want to show everybody how crazy this looks. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a work in progress. Uh, but you know, my my thought process behind it really is follow nature. Really, I, you know, I follow Marco and Brian, the, the Brian and Marco show on Future Cannabis Project, and. I followed, you know, once I found that, that site, you know, I, I've really taken a hold to that, and that living soil aspect. And I just, you know, everybody was using all the, I still had to go buy a bag of soil. You know, it, it, everything had perlite in it, you know, and I just was tired of going and buying bags of soil, really. And I was like, there's got to be a better way. It's just, I mean, nobody, there's not perlite. When I go foraging in the woods, there's no perlite in the ground. There's no, you know, there's nothing there feeding it. There's no alfalfa meal. And these trees get really big. And nobody planted that seed. You know, it, it planted itself. It grew and it went on up. And it used something in that ground yeah. to get that big. Yeah, and nobody was out there fertilizing it. <laughs> let's see if I let's see if I can do this here. All right, window. All right, there we go. See if we can get this, guys. I don't know what if you. There we go. All there right, guys. We got his page here. If I can move it over here. All right. If you look at this garden here, guys, you can see he's got moss and he's got trees and he's got just like everything in here i mean now what what kind of caterpillar is this or whatever this is centipede uh well it says it right there i can't pronounce it you know it's a kentucky flatworm some some type okay. of kentucky flatworm but it's it says to be it's you know poisonous if touched it's, it releases some type of cyanide type secretion out of its side that uh, is poisonous and can be irritated to the skin so they recommend you wear gloves you know when you mess with that kind of stuff so <laughs> i'm glad i had gloves on that day actually i found that one when i found the jar i found a broken jar a smaller one that i haven't put in the bed yet i, I put it on my reel but i haven't put it in this bed i'm working on another project that i'm probably going to use that in but um yeah, the moss is uh, also the moss is great home for those kind of critters. You know, all those, and it also is a great moisture retention. You know, that I had a problem. I was losing a lot of moisture in these beds around the edges because the soil. See, if you okay. don't get your if you don't get your mulch right, if you don't really get that thick mulch, which takes time. You know, if you do it right, uh, it's just going to take time to basically what break down right there so i'm wow. skipping I'm, I'm skipping the compost method but i'm not even adding anything to it like uh, the only thing i've added in that bed is a half a quarter cup of gypsum and a quarter cup of kelp meal that's it everything that's else impressive. Everything else is uh, is straight from the woods, right around here on the top four inches. Yeah, and I set it up in a in, it's in a in a horizontal method. Have you heard of a horizontal method from uh, Leighton Morrison? I haven't. This is uh, impressive. So edu educate us here. Okay, well Leighton Morrison, I, he's a he's a genius when it comes to soil. And I found him on uh, Future Cannabis Project, and him and uh, Brian used to do a uh, show called Living Soil on, uh, I think it was every Wednesday. They don't do it anymore, but I wish they would. But uh, he, yeah, used to always, he used to always say, you know, that uh, he said, don't be a moron. 
And I and he was like, don't be a not a more on, but a more on. You know, you don't want to keep adding all this stuff to your bed. It's just, it's just, it's detrimental. You know, it's what it is when you just start just adding things. Oh, I'm gonna need more. I need more kelp. Or you know, when something's not going right, you're like, oh, I need more calcium. I need more, you know, gypsum. Or I need more of this. Or I need more of that. Most of the time, that's just not the case. Most of the time, that all that mineral is in that bed. It's just not available yet. You know, it's not it's not available to the plant. It may be available to some other organisms and bacteria and fungi that are in there messing around, but it's just not available to the plant. And that's why you're having problems. So it's really it's really about time. You know, time really breaks everything down. Everybody wants to rush, you know, and I get it. <laughs> I get it, you know, I want my, I want mine, you know, quick too. But uh you know, mother nature does it best. I can tell you that right now. Hands down. You know, I've I've done some hydro, I've done some cocoa. But I I've ne I've never seen the terpene expression that I've seen with with the living soil. It's just, Definitely. it is so much easier. Oh my God. <laughs> if you ain't got time, you know, if you're always on the go and, you, and you, if you need to go for like two or three days and, and, and you can't water and nobody's there to do anything for you and you don't have a system set up, but you got to go and you can't come back and your shit's going to die. You know, if you're in a 30 gallon pot or if you're in a 10 gallon pot, you're done. Uh, in a, in a in a four by four, it's just so much easier. You, you have so much more leeway to the to the whole grow. It's just you know it's yeah it it's just that much easier. You know really. De definitely, I'm I'm doing a I've got a four by four bed myself. You know, or no, it's a three by three. Sorry, I had a four by four, but it was too big and put it went day with three by three because the four by four. I didn't have enough room to get around it. I only have a five by five tent and uh, I needed some room. So I downsized and we, we la layered it out. I, w I was looking at some of your guys' pictures over here on your Instagram as well. And it looks like you did like river rock as well and stuff like that as well. in one of your beds. That is, that's cool. That's, that's this one. Yeah. This is the only one I've done uh, like okay. this. Uh, this is the first one. I just, I just did a lot of research, you know, I've, I've been listening to these guys, you know, for <laughs> three years now, you know, almost four and, and, you know, I've just, I, I took my time, I, I researched, uh, Marco helped me out a lot. Um, it, it's really all about the setup. You really have to, it's like the foundation, man. Like you don't want to build a skyscraper without a good foundation. And if you don't have right. a place, for, if you don't have a place for that stuff to go, like that moisture, that, that excess moisture, that's gonna happen. You know, if you don't have a place for it to go, it's gonna ruin your stuff over time. You know, you may have a good first two, three, four, but over time, it's just gonna start to get nasty. Worms, like, please don't put compost worms in your four by four. <laughs> if you want it to last, you know, if that's that's uh, that was a big no no for me. Uh, I, did, I, I did not know that, you know. Oh, no. now, now I'm kind of kicking myself in the ass because I did put some worms in our garden. Well, I don't mind a few, but I can tell you those those red regular like I only do earthworms, like whatever coming out the soil out there. Like I'm not buying red wigglers and putting them in my four by four. I made that mistake. That's a big mistake. <laughs> because them some bitches reproduce and reproduce and reproduce and don't stop reproducing if they're in a good environment in which usually they are you know because usually the cannabis grower is taking pretty good care of his stuff especially in 4 by 4 that 4 by 4 will turn to mush and worm shit in two and a half years three years tops you know you'll be you'll be adding you know, more perlite or more rice hulls or whatever you're adding to your to your system to to give it that air, you know, to keep that air that, that it's going to turn to mush. <laughs> I've seen it happen yeah. firsthand. You yeah. know, I've stuck. You know, the best way I know to get them out, you know, is that avocado tech. 
You know, the avocado, okay. the avocado tech will bring them to the surface and you can just scoop them out. You know, that's the best way I know to get them out. Like if when they get overpowering, because they will, especially when you're adding kelp, you're adding all that food in there to them, man. I mean, you're feeding them things like crazy <laughs> and, they're oh, feeding, yeah. and they're feeding your plant, which is what you want. But over time is what I'm saying. Like I, I'm, I'm setting mine up for a lifelong bit. Like I never want to touch this thing. All I'm going to do is like be adding wood, like really fine, clean wood that I find in the woods. You know, that, yeah. that it, what I mean by clean is that when I pick up a piece of wood and, you know, and it's really mush and it's like sponge. You know, but you look at it and it's just full of worm holes. It's like got bug holes all in it. That's not what I'm looking for. You know, that stuff has, you know, the, the larva and the eggs are it's still in there. You can't see the bugs, you know, but as soon as it warms up and you hit some moisture in there and they put it in that bed, then bugs are coming. You know, that larva's in there. And if you don't have some good bugs in there to take them out, like some good nematodes or like some good, you know, beneficial bugs to knock these things out. Yeah, you're gonna have some big problems. <laughs> you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna, have, you're gonna, have, you're gonna have a nasty mess on your hands, where you're gonna have, you know, dick gnats flying all, or fungus gnats. I call them dick gnats, but uh, yeah, they'll be flying all over everywhere, you know, and everything. You know, I don't mind a few. You're gonna have a few. Like I have some, some fungus gnats. You know, there are some, you know, flying around. I hang a sticky, like a little sticky uh, rope uh, up in the ceiling. Yeah. I don't like to hang it. Don't hang it close to your bed because you've got beneficials in there. And I don't want to yep. be catching my beneficials. So, no. But the, the flyers, you know, the little, the little dick gnats, you know, they'll head up to the light. You know, so I'll hang my little sticky pad. I'll usually just lay it on top of the light. Like I'll stretch it out. And just lay it on top of one of the light bulbs or like one of the little, you know, strips of the lights. Okay. If you have one of those or just lay it on any type of light because that's where those things are going. You know, either that or the floor fan. I like the floor fan. Floor fan catch, kills a lot of them too. You know, just a regular I have a metal fan that you just stick on the floor. And it just okay. blows and circulates all through the, through the room and... Those dick gnats usually will come out the bag usually and they'll fall down and they'll get sucked into that fan and boom, they're dead. Hey, yeah. that's pretty pretty nifty then, definitely. Hey, we all we all have our own ways, like I always tell everybody on the show, and it's so unique hearing everybody else's other ways. And your garden bed, the way you set it up, it's a masterpiece. It's like you're painting the picture. I mean, it, it's beautifully done. You thank you. You you definitely put some thought into what you're doing and it's impressive, you know? And like I said, I, I seen that you layered it out and that's what I'm doing. I, I just got into doing beds myself. I've always been large pots using uh, wicking systems that are self watering, but yep. I wanted, I wanted to go into something that was more hands off cause I am on the road all the time. And, these beds are the way to do it. I mean, you got to find a good soil base to start with. I mean, yeah. obviously. And I was lucky enough that my one of my good friends from Country Roots here in Michigan, he's a geologist and he makes his own soil because that is the reason why I got into it was all the grow shops locally were closing down. And I didn't know a lot enough about soil, but I knew how, how to use it. I just didn't know how to make it. And I went in there and got some soil. And then I went for my next grill because I threw that soil away, not thinking, you know, you could reuse it. And they were gone. They were closed up shop. So I went to the next town where they had another shop and that one was gone too. And I was like, I'm not going to the next, next town because that's driving too far. And that's when I found out my friend that makes soil locally had something to offer living soil. And we built a base and we put together my own recipe and kind of put things together. And I I'm doing a first auto flower run on it, but I must say, you know, as I started researching and starting looking around at other people's bed, 
like I said, yours caught my eye. The dryers caught my eye the first thing. And I was just like, wow, what has he got going on here? I'm like, it's so beautiful. I'm like, you really did paint a picture with it. And, and it, you keep up the good work. I, I want to continue to watch your page and see what involves and see what you see what you got up your sleeve next. But what are some of the favorite genetics you've grown so far? I just finished this uh, meat breath uh, from Rennington uh, Genetics that I got off Bee Leaf's page. I got it off there maybe two years ago, and I just had it stored away. I uh, bought some Kobe beef and some meat breath from them. And I, uh, like I said, I just pulled them out and uh, dropped a, I dropped six meat breaths. Um, I got uh, three females out of six. All three were different phenotypes. So I got a little bit of different, a little bit of difference out of all three of these plants. You know, one of them was just, it's just, it's funky. It's probably the best I've ever grown and smoked myself personally. Like, I mean, it, it's just funky. <laughs> when you smell it, it's just, and it, it's when you hit it, it, it stays with you. It's like that stickiness, you know, you get that film in your mouth. It's like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I like that. That's good. Yeah. It's like gassy, thick, you know, you know, I'm used to berry, you know, I get a lot of berry stuff. You know, I, I did a woody melon uh, from Nerds Genetics. I screwed it all up. I mean, it was overwatered and just in a 30 gallon pot. All of these were in 30 gallon pots, by the way. None of these are in a bed. All these are in 30 gallon living soil pots. And uh, yeah, I screwed, I just overwatered it, you know, I'm just in this. The bottom of it, I'd set up in the horizontal. I try. I did do that. I forgot to tell you. I, I set it up in a horizontal method in a thirty-gallon pot, and I screwed up by not using the silt. I used clay on the edges because I I was having soil that was literally like it was going hydrophobic on me. Is what it was doing. It was contracting. You, know, you put it all in there, you know, and you put all these amendments in a small container, and then you just try and put something right directly in it. You don't let it so-called cook, you know, to get those microbes going and get everything broken down for it to be available to the plant. And you just go throwing a plant in there and trying to water it, and uh, yeah, everything shrinks up on you, you know, and. You get these big gaps on the sides that, you know, and, and basically everything just goes hydro on you and you, it just doesn't hold water anymore. And I was trying to prevent that at the bottom by just putting a little bit of clay around the edge so it would kind of run towards the center. And uh, that's a big no-no. Don't do that. <laughs> it, okay. it, just, it, just, it just directs the water somewhere else. And just causes problems, and you still get the same effect. Um, I found something that that's working really well. That you know, I just stumbled across with this silt down at the at the reservoir. I live on a freshwater reservoir, um, so that's wow. a big plus for me. When I found out what I had, and that's kind of where you know Marco and Brian and all these guys kind of. You know, they just, they let, they set bells off in my head. You know, you get these little light bulbs that go off. You know, I'm like, wait a minute. I have that shit right down here. You know, I got all that right down here. You know, right. silk, they're like silica, you know, like sand. You know, it's like, literally, it's what makes, I've never had stronger plants. Like, when you go to touch the base of it to try and bend it, it's like steel. I mean, wow. like, I, 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 that I'll never need. A, a net or you know a prop up again because the, the plants are just so strong because once they hit that silt that silt and, it, and basically all silt is is that it's broken down plant matter to its almost finest form okay so it's what's basically running down these hills all that plant matter all those leaves and that's fallen through all the years and it's just fall and it gets washed down to this reservoir area there's always been a creek isn't there it hasn't always been a reservoir but there's always been a creek there you know okay. and, the, and then man just came in and 
and cleared it out from the creek and made it into a reservoir. Because it was a nice little hole here in this in this plot of land here that that would create that reservoir. You know, so it was just easy for us to come in and take bulldozers and expand on that creek, so to speak, and turn it into a, a reservoir for uh, Newport News. Uh, it's a it's Newport News Waterworks is what it, what they call it. Wow. So it's it's basically drinking water for the people down there live in Newport News. Okay. So there's no there's no gas boats. There's no swimming. There's no docks. There's no pollution, you know, other than what's running down these hills from whatever, you know. But yeah, it's it's clean water. That's impressive. So, Definitely. The, the plants love it. I'll tell you that. The plants really do. I, I, I don't know if you can go on one of my reels. You can see it just matted. Like I put a plant in a pot and just put the silt in a tray, in a plant tray, and then set the pot on top of that. Uh, on top of that silt. I didn't take the bottom of the pot off or anything. Just, you know, a plastic pot with four holes in the bottom of it. I just set it on top of there. And about four weeks later, it matted the whole tray, literally. Like, I mean, these, these plants just went through the pot and just, <laughs> it was unbelievable. I mean, and they were clean roots, too. That's another thing that was impressed me, too, is like they weren't all dirty and brown. Like they were actually clean roots, and I was like, you know, I may have something here, you know. This this, right. this might be yeah, what, this might be this might be what I need to put on that top layer of that rock, you know, in that horizontal method. So I'll go rock, you know, and then the different layers of rock. So you'll get a big a big rock like a like a marble rock or whatever you can do with granite or whatever it is, and then go to a big a uh, smaller. And until you all the way get down to a P, you know, you want to go from big to small to P. And then once okay. you get that, once you get that P layer, that nice smooth layer, smooth and level as you can, all the way to the edges. And make sure you push that rock and because that stuff is going to bow out the bag. You know, it'll, as you put soil on top of that rock, it will push and bow out the sides of the bag. And that kind of screws up everything later on. And when you go to put your soil on, it kind of contracts your soil a little bit and you don't get that full coat, you know, that and that's the kind of problem I was having. So I, the solution I had for that was that moss. You know, I had that okay. little I had that little gap there. And so I just took that moss and I and I, I noticed that that moss has just full of worm castings on the back side of it. So I just took that moss and packed it down in there and there's in those cracks all the way around. And then that took care of that 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 moisture loss. You know, it's gonna it's gonna suck that moisture up. And so I just took my my mulch and pushed it all the way to the edge and then just set that moss and the worm castings right on top of that mulch and let her go. And Definitely. over you know, over time that will those roots will take back hold and go to town. I just can't believe uh, it just blows my mind that you transplanted essentially the whole forest into the house and everything took like that's, everything, a, that's what's everything took, yeah. And Mar yeah. I'll tell you another thing the IMO uh, I did on top of, uh, so let me go through the layers again to make sure people understand that, you know, the horizontal method is, is very important in a four by four. I believe, I think, uh, I don't think is really any other way i would do it now that i've done it all i've done you know just straight soil that's all i've ever done is just to throw the soil in there you know and just let it go fill the whole bag up you know let it go and, and i think that the way we're screwing that up is it's just it's just not like you know and they put that gap in that living soil bag they get the plastic that lines that living soil bag to keep and hold that moisture but you still need that air, you know, that air gap to circulate, yeah. you know. And that's really the only reason you need that air gap is because you're indoors. You know, you're going to bring this indoors and you really don't have that 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 pressure 
from from the weather that's really pushing down on that all that moisture into the soil that like outside you don't have that inside you know unless you really got unless you're really dialed in you know you can have your room really dialed in with the pressure and all that but you know it takes some money <laughs> yeah but, i don't uh, got that yeah but uh yeah, that's that's the issue with you know when you're bringing all this stuff inside, you still need to be able to somehow get that airflow. You know, everything needs that air. Uh, so the solution to that is the horizontal method. That that rock at the bottom gives you that airflow that allows it to come through and go up. You know, because you have those gaps and. So on top of the rocks, what, what what's your next layer? You know, so that, that's the silt. That's the most important part. The most important okay. part on top of that P layer is, is the is the silt layer. If you can go to any any river, and what I would do is to get the cleanest. If you do, if you can't find a reservoir, uh, which you know they're hard to find sometimes these days, but any any river, and I would go to a river or uh, in all rivers have these little creeks that run up in them. You know, I would go up in that creek, you know, and I would find where water is running down in the cleanest spot I can, like that rainwater is running down and, and hitting that little creek, you know, that's filling that creek. And uh, that's where I would look, you know, right at that edge line, right where that water meets that, that, that soil line just just underneath that front water where that water comes up and down up and down you know that sand that silt layer right as that right at that water line is what you're looking for okay that's that's that's, that's the good stuff <laughs> <laughs> that's the layer that i want to put because that's that organic matter that's already broken down for us you know all yeah. that organic matter that's coming out of those woods it's being broke down and it turns into sand. It turns into real fine. We call it silt because, you know, it's got organic matter in it. You know, you can find, you're going to find leaves in it. I would not pick those leaves out. I would leave those leaves in there. You know, I, that's what I did. The only thing I did do when I did bring that sand and silt up from the reservoir is I laid it out on a tarp. I spread it all out on a tarp and I let the sun dry it. Um, I did do that for four or five days, you know, and just till it was, you know, you can tell a difference in the color, you know, once it's dry and I just throw the tarp back up, you know, got it all into a big pile and put it in the bed and even it out as best I could all the way across as even as possible. <clears throat> That's another big thing. Getting those cracks up in those corners. That's where everything. That's where everything seems to want to contract, you know, in those in those corners, and that's where that that moss really helps because it's it's flexible. It, it absorbs a, a shit ton of water. It holds a shit ton of water. There's worm castings already underneath of it, you know. So there's already fuel there for the roots that you that you pulled it out. You know, I pulled it out of the of the ground so of course i've broken those roots now so they're going to need to heal but those worm castings once you lay it on top of your mulch layer if your mulch layer is good it should it should take you know maybe a month maybe before it it'll be rooted right back down in there you know and she'd be taken off like crazy definitely have you ever seen moss poles and the reason I ask is I was at a gardening event last weekend that my buddy was putting on, but I got there late, so I didn't get a chance to get any footage. But I did get a picture. I'll have to send it to you after the show. And these, this lady makes these locally. They're about four foot tall, and they're all made of moss that is essentially put into like a, uh, like a chicken wire. And... Okay. Um, but the tube that she builds, she, that she puts it on, it's almost like a, uh, I guess she could use like a wrapping paper cardboard tube. And it, it, she attaches the moss to it and then uses chicken wire to kind of hold it. Yep. And she said, 
she says that the the plants will literally attract feeler roots out to this moss pole and then she just waters down the center of this moss pole it absorbs it every couple of days and it essentially stores and waters her plants and i it was the neatest thing i've ever seen in my life it makes perfect sense man yeah it makes perfect sense yeah <laughs> i can see that yeah 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 that moss is really is really cool because it all connects you know it's all like individual they're all like little individual plants but they all connect so closely and they're so bonded so closely together that you know it's really awesome to see that moss but if you really get close to it they're like all like little individuals you know in there wow. <laughs> that's so impressive so how many layers do you have in your bed and what's the next layer after the soak so the silk neck then this comes uh, whatever you know good soil you can find uh what okay. i do I, the this for this bed i had uh, purchased um uh build a soils base blend yeah uh, which is just the basic no additives you know it's, he does a really good job putting his stuff together um so you know i listened to a lot of his his youtube shows and you know he had a lot of good information <clears throat> so I, uh, I bought his base blend for a bed that I had outside and I filled basically that bed outside with the base blend. And that's the one out there that I just, you know, I did, I tried my super soil, you know, I, you know, I did the, the, uh, you know, most, most people like to mix things, you know, and think they're smarter than what they really are, you know, <laughs> just yeah, go to the store to we're trying to get that special recipe yeah we, man. We, yeah exactly you want that special recipe man so i'm just out there you know i'm getting damn uh you know whatever you call it i've got everything man i don't know i went to damn lowe's i went to home depot i went to ace you know i'm trying to get each individual different one you know and i didn't know no better you know i was just <laughs> like a fool spending a bunch of money and Definitely. uh and then I just, you know, basically once I learned that wasn't the way, I found, you know, Future Canvas Pro, I found all these different shows, you know, it wasn't just Future Canvas, you know, I listened to them all. You know, I think all of them have something to offer, you know, even the, the indoor hydro guys, you know, all, everybody has something to offer that's, that's usually helpful in some way, you know. You know, natural farming is just one way to, to get away from uh, having to go to the grocery store every day or every week or every month or right. exactly the grocery store is literally right outside your door if you if you live you know anywhere near some woods you know yeah unfortunately i don't right where i stay because i live in a senior citizen housing community no lie yeah, yeah. I, bought, I bought myself into it and i got lucky and i'm like the youngest person literally in this whole place <laughs> so, so yeah but it's it's fun you know because you don't have to worry about nothing but definitely uh yeah if it's outside your door use it you know use what's available to you be sustainable it, it really saves some money there now it really I, does I, as long as you do it long as you do it right as long as you do it right if you do it right like if you just go out in the woods and you just you know bum rush in the woods and bringing back five gallon buckets of you know bugs you might have problems you know i'm yeah. i'm very nitpicky when i do this you know i'm very picky yeah. that, that's that's <clears throat> that's that's the key to it you know and i'm and I'm in the diversity of it all you know i'm i'm doing pine i'm doing i'm doing i'm doing everything everything is in my woods and i'm doing it in very small minute amounts you know okay. that, that that's 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 okay. a key too i'm just not dumping a whole bunch of wood and a whole bunch of you know this thing this i basically used my alfalfa hay on top of that build a soil as rebar and now wow. i'm basically filling in the gaps of that alfalfa hay with what i'm foraging out of the woods and what i'm foraging is already broken down you, you know it's already at that stage where i don't have to wait you know it's already the worm castings are there they're natural it's it's what the trees are feeding off of basically you know <laughs> definitely you know. 
Well, let's take a quick smoke break. I'm going to play an ad from our sponsors real quick. Cool, and it'll give us a chance to take a couple of hits here and not yeah. get in trouble with, with the big boss here. So here yeah, we go. Cool. I'm going to play an ad real quick. Everybody take a smoke break real quick. What, roughly 40 seconds, not long. So here we go. Genetics, we trust Seedsman Genetics, a seed bank that has been in business for over 20 years. So head on over to Seedsman and use coupon code organically blunt. Pop popping jars, cure, store, and save your terps with Terp Lock technology. Grow bags, your solution for auto curing and cannabis storage, along with customized design solutions. Make sure to use coupon code organically blunt at checkout. This is the soil and amendments we trust country roots because we like to know what we're putting in our body is organic and it is the best that can be made locally. So head on over to countryroots.com and tell them Organically Blunt sent you. Thank you guys. We're, we're doing a new setup with the show, you guys. I hope you guys appreciate it. We're just doing the ads a little bit mid-show. You know, not so much in the beginning because we want to dive right into things with you guys. But we have to get back to the people who make this happen and make it free to everybody. You know, they're paying for me to learn different editing techniques. They're paying for me to help get out here and get this information in front of you guys. And they are the ones that are making it so I can afford to get this information by going different places, you know. So I uh, wanted to give a quick thanks to everybody that supports the show. But definitely, I want to dive into a couple questions with you that we normally ask everybody and kind of dig into, you know, who you are as a person, not necessarily who you grow who you are as a grower, but as a person. And, you know, with that being said, we kind of want to hear where the first time you got cannabis and where'd you find it from? Oh, first time I tried cannabis was a uh, high school. I was just got my driver's license, me and a buddy, you know, uh, I was hanging out with a guy whose uh, grandfather is a funny story. I was hanging out with a guy whose grandfather was a pipe fitter. And he had he had a he had a shed or a, a, a single wide trailer, and it was just full of buckets of pipes and fittings and you, you name it. But it was old old school stuff, you know. This guy <laughs> and and a, a friend of ours at school, uh, actually a good friend of mine today, still today, and uh, he uh, had moved up here from Newport News. And I had never seen cannabis before. And uh, in fact, I'd never even really thought much of it, to be honest with you. And uh, he came in and was friends with a friend. And my friend that I was hanging out with, he's like, hey, man, this kid, you know, he's just he's new. He can get weak. I was like, really? I was like, what? all right, cool. Yeah, yeah, I'll try it. You know, whatever. It's cool. All right, well, how are we going to smoke it? Oh, I don't know. What do you smoke it out of? I don't know. Well, of course, we had it out to the shed. And uh, next thing I know, we've got a, a elbow of some uh, galvanized pipe with a screw in, you know. Yeah. <laughs> got a... Uh, Go in, go into the, uh, go to the grandma's house there at, at his place. He, he lived with his grandparents at the time. Went to his grandparents' house, went to the bathroom, and picked the uh, screen out of the, uh, out of the damn sink, and stuck it in a bowl. And uh, we went. This was before I even got the weed. Like we were just going to get the weed. Like we needed something to smoke out of. So this is what we made. We were going to go meet the guy at this turnaround. And we went down to this turnaround. We met the guy. And he was like, yeah, cool. We've got an eighth. I think it was uh, 20 bucks for the eighth at the time. It was literally like $5 a dime or $10 a dime, $5 a nickel, $20 an eighth. And we packed it up. And I hit it. And I shit you not, it was the nastiest shit I had ever tasted or done in my entire life. And I had swallowed tobacco. My dad had made me swallow fucking tobacco when I was a kid, okay? And 
like just to make sure I wouldn't do it. He's like, I don't want you doing this shit, boy. Here, take try some of this. You know, here, you know, swallow it. And I swallow it. Of course, I threw up. Right. And, uh, I never did tobacco. I tell you that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but I, it just tasted like shit. You know, it was basically because I was we were smoking it out of a damn galvanized pipe. You know, that was rusted. You know, it had rust all probably down in the center of rust in the center of the pipe. You know. It was just nasty, and I was like, that was not good at all. I was like, I don't know why y'all do this shit. I wasn't high. Well, <laughs> I think it was the, I think, you know, it was uh, that after that same afternoon, we went to the store and got a Philly Blunt, and we rolled a Philly Blunt, and it was game over from there. Yeah, I got really high. <laughs> uh, we smoked the Blunt, and we smoked another Blunt, and yeah, it was on from there, man. It's just uh, awesome. it's, been, uh, it's been a part of my life ever since, pretty much. I had to I had to quit for about 10, 12 years, but uh, I came back after that, and it's been been a part of my life ever since. Definitely, I think uh, well, um, while we're sitting here chatting, I'm gonna give away a pack of seeds this week. I have not given away a pack of seeds in a while on here, and I got a couple extras here in the ball, and I'm going to set it up so we can give away a pack while we're chatting here. But chat, you got to bear with me because I have not done in a while, so I got to set up a keyword here for you guys. But while I'm doing that, once it'll load, my computer is really old and slow. My computer just turned 12 years old. Oh, hey, that's a good run, man. I didn't think those yeah. things lasted that long. Yeah, yeah, that's a laptop on top of it. And uh, yeah, a lot of people say that. They're like, man, that's a long time. I'm like, yeah, tell me about it. Like, good. yeah, like, and uh, I, I upgraded a lot of it, but it's maxed out. It ain't, there ain't much you can do to it now. So I think we're going to build a desktop, something that I can play around with that can do a little bit more and it's a little more affordable i just won't be able to take it with me but i do everything as far as the live shows here at the studio or if i do it on the road i do it with my phone so everything yeah. i you see see we do we do on the phone <laughs> and that's, that's what makes it crazy is a lot of people can't believe that i produce pretty much 90 percent of the show off a of cell phone and uh the rest of it is done on a computer, but not much. Them things are amazing, aren't they? Oh, definitely. So <laughs> once I get this, once I get this going here, I want to, uh, let's see here. I told my dad to get one today. He was like, no, he flips out his flip phone, you know, and he just flips it open. He's like, this is good. I'm, I'm good with this. I was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, that's a good choice, Dad. At this point, just don't even try. Don't even get don't even get a smartphone because you probably never get your face out of it. Definitely. All right. So here we go. I got something fun here. We're gonna have a little fun, guys. So bear with me. I know I'm not always prepared, but I try to be. All right. So all right. I'm gonna start with a weekly bounty. Now, this is seed pack is going to be sponsored by our self. I'm going to give something away. Being that spring just hit, it's time to start getting you guys the seeds ready for the outdoor grows. And we're going to give away a pack to help get you guys started. So, giveaway should be coming through the chat. I'm going to get it going here. And it should be coming through with the word. I got to get it back open. Uh, we'll see how it goes. It's open for five minutes here, but definitely. So, you know, you didn't like it the first time, but once you started liking and enjoying it and getting that high, everybody has a go-to munchie. And now I got to get these guys going because, you know, got to make them hungry here. And um, what is your go-to munchie? Is it something sweet? Is it sugar? Is it salty? Is it healthy? What do you enjoy eating when you got the yeah, I have a I have a problem with uh, peanut butter M Ms or peanut M Ms. You know the yellow bag. 
Definitely. Yeah, that's that's my go-to. Okay. I got some. I got some in the freezer. I keep them in the freezer. <laughs> hey, that there ain't nothing wrong with that. Mine is little Debbie's and sour candy. Anything sour, like I got, I gotta have it. So everybody has their thing. And that, you know, that definitely, as we're approaching the hour mark here, gets us up to the final question that makes organically blunt, organically blunt. And this question I ask everybody, but before we ask it, I have to set the ground rules. And the ground rules is simple. You cannot think of it. I want you to literally blurt out the first thought you, that comes to mind. And with that being said, here it is. If you could smoke with anybody dead or alive, who would it be and why? Oh, Willie Nelson. Okay. Yeah, hands down. Definitely. I gotta smoke. With, I gotta smoke with Willie, man. <laughs> anybody, you know, anybody that gets a song written about him who says they'll never smoke with Willie again, I want to smoke with Willie. You know, and, and Snoop said that you know the only person that ever smoked him out was Willie. So yeah. It's Willie for sure. Definitely. That is awesome. Yeah. We got about two and a half minutes, guys, uh, before this uh, bounty will be done here. And what I need you guys to do when this does get complete is DM me on Instagram or you can email me at organicblunt at gmail.com and we'll get you out a pack of seeds. You know, this week is sponsored by Seedsman Genetics. And if you like Seedsman, I'm sure we're going to get you out some goodies from them. You know, you never know what might end up in the package. I might just become real nice and throw a bunch of extras in. You never know. So it's a surprise for everybody. Definitely, I love to give back to you guys, the community. We just hit 50,000 views. So I am blown that 50,000 different people have watched me talk, you know. I <laughs> I, I, I can't you, believe I'm even on here, dude. I, dude, I tell you what, you made you. I'm checking off the bucket list, dude. For real. I mean, I'm. I am much. The much thing you're gonna here, realize. Dude. The thing you're gonna realize is not only did you just open yourself a door, you opened a door to a community. And I'm not saying the fame. I'm not saying the money. I'm not saying the fortune. I'm saying community of people who care, people who scratch each Absolutely. other's. Head. We're family. We're we're there to help each other when it gets hard. We're there to lift you up. We're there when you to praise you when you do something amazing, and you know that's what it's about. Community and community would not be anything without you and I. And it's right in the word community. You and I. You can see it yourself. <laughs> Unity, and, uh, unity and community, my friend. Yes, exactly. And I've been on that since day one, and. You know, you're always welcome back here when you got something going on. You know, I know you got something coming up. You know, you kind of sneak peeked me. And you want to sneak peek now? You want to sneak peek now? You guys want to sneak peek or do you guys want to wait and have them reveal it on Instagram? L let me know in the chat right now. Do you guys want to sneak peek? If you do, comment sneak peek. Let's see what they say. <laughs> Let's see. It's okay if they don't. <laughs> it's it's a mess right now. So they want to see. They want to see. Definitely. That All, right. Awesome. All right. Let me go. Uh... Let's see what he's up to, guys. This is quite amazing. You know, you definitely have to be an innovator and think outside the box here. So... All right. We're gonna. <clears throat> what I'm trying to do is close the loop, and I'm not sure how I'm gonna show this, but without seeing it, but. I'll show you. Can you see it? Oh, wow. If you can see it. Let me make it big here. One second. There we go. All right. You got full center stage. Show us what's going on. <laughs> okay. All right. This is what's going on. This is a sandbox. Basically a silt box that I built. And this is all a model. This is all rough. So please, you know, have a little bit of imagination here. So... This is a retention pond. This is going to be a fish pond. I'm going to pump water up to a mountain. It's going to come through a mountain and drop down into this pool here, and it's going to run. This is like a creek. Just imagine this is a deep creek running through the mountains. 
and it's going to run down. This is like an irrigation system. It's going to, and it's going to be little pools along the way, and it's going to splash, boosh, boosh. There's going to be rocks inside, so I'll line the inside of this river. The river will run all the way down through here. It'll go underneath here, come out through here, run around, and come up and pool here, and then dump into the retention pond where it's cleaned. And then it'll dump into the fish pond where the fish will shit and do all that good stuff. And then it'll be pumped back in and it'll just rotate all around. And it'll just be a one pump system where all the excess water, the, the plants will be here, 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 and here. And there'll be, there'll be a mountain here. There'll be sides. I'm going to build up rocks and sides. So it'll basically be like a river running through a four by eight. Uh, with its own creek system basically running through it. Irrigation uh -huh. irrigation system, so to speak, because I'm going to have it. Uh, what I'm going to try and create is that splash effect. It's where it kind of splash. You know how when you're looking at a creek or a river, yeah. you get that, you, you, you get that, those pools that splash up. And where that splash happens is where that moss grows. And that's what I'm trying to recreate on the edges all along through here. So I'll just basically build a recreation of a mountain scene or all around through here. There'll be a big mountain and I'm basically going to have a, a, the water will be coming through the center of the mountain and pouring down into here and splashing and then pouring and it'll be all the, you gotta have, you gotta have a little bit of imagination, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the idea. Man, that is impressive. You, Wow, I am I am definitely one second here. Get your back on here. Play with the camera here. Ah, there we go. I think I got it. There we go. Yep. I am completely mind blown. Like <laughs> Well, that's that's I'm gonna try and close that loop, you know. I'm gonna try and bring everything in in nature that like I did with that one bed. But now I'm going to add the, the, the water system and the fertilizer all in one. And, and the fish pond will be my fertilizer. And hopefully I won't ever have to fertilize. I won't ever have to do anything but, you know, just tweak it here and there. You know, and what I feed my fish basically is what is going to feed my plants. Wow, that is impressive. Yeah. You guys, make sure you follow him on Instagram, Yellow Skunk Farms. And that leaves me to my last question. You know, everybody wants to know. So what does the yellow skunk stand for in your name? Uh, I came up with the yellow skunk because that was the first decent plant I grew, which was just last year. Uh, it's a cross between uh, nerds. It's a nerds genetics, um, daddy fat sacks. And then I crossed that with um, Yellow Hammer's Blueberry Skank, which is a skunk number one crossed with the Blueberry OG. I don't want to get it wrong, so I don't want to say, but you can look them up. Sure. And uh, I, I had the, the, the male was the, uh, was the Yellow Skunk, I mean, was the um, Yellow Hammer, and the female was the uh, Daddy Fat Sack. And out of that came <clears throat> four beautiful uh nice plants and <clears throat> one of them that was really nice just happened to be really shady yellow and i happen to like the color yellow it's like one of my favorite colors and it just happened to just pop in my head and i was just like holy shit i'm just, I'm just gonna call it yellow skunk and uh oh, yeah, that's cool. it. That's so cool and then i looked it up it's an actual animal i mean yeah, it's very rare yeah. to find them, but yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I, I saw. I had to Google it, of course. You know, once I I thought of it, the first thing I do when I think of something you know, is Google it to make sure you know I'm not stealing something from somebody else. You know, <clears throat> sure. but yeah, yeah, that's that's so cool. cool, definitely. Well, can you tell everybody where they can find you on Instagram and? If there's anything else you got going on or if there's any events you're going to be attending in your area where people can see you at, you know, where can people connect with you and learn more about what you do and maybe they can learn a little bit from you? 
Yeah, right now I'm just at uh, Yellow Skunk, you know, at Yellow Skunk on Instagram. That's uh, I've only been on there for, uh, <clears throat> like I said, I'm going on almost four months. So, you know, three and a half months is that's all I've been on. So this is all new to me, dude. So, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away that you guys are <laughs> so interested in in this but uh yeah it's cool i really enjoy it and uh i like making models i love you know i've always been you know pretty creative and uh yeah this is something i've had on my head for a long time and to actually you know marco gave me the idea marco is growing cannabis naturally and in, on instagram cannabis naturally he has a system that's kind of like what i'm doing but he he does it a different way uh in a four by four bed so he kind of gave me the idea of just why don't I just go ahead and loop this whole system, you know, in, and just make it creative as I could, you know, just make it fun. I like it fun. And I want it <clears throat> organics is kind of boring, you know, once it gets, once you get everything going, there's, there's not a whole lot to do, you know. <laughs> no, I know I'm in there every day and I'm like, oh, I need to do something. I'm like, and I've been cutting my cover crop back every day because yeah, yeah. Grows like crazy. I have cover crop, and I'm like, I'm like, oh shit! I'm like, well, I cut the cover crop. What else can I do today? I'm like, God, oh, do they need to do some training? Do I need to feed them? No, they look good. I'm like, how's the moisture level? <laughs> I'm, like, yeah, I'm, no like, I'm like, well, what do I do? I'm like, I'm bored. I need something. To do. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I, I can relate definitely. So, yeah, I appreciate you coming on the show. You're welcome to come back anytime. You know, I would love to be back, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'd love to have you back on once you get it up and running, and maybe once you do a harvest. What I think you really need to do once you get it going is you need to do. You need to get out. Whoever you're going to grow, reach out to them, have them help shout you out, and do a seed to harvest. You know, just start recording what you're doing from when you germinate to when you harvest and put a series together because it's going to blow you up because the way you're doing things, I've never seen anybody ever do that. And that's why we had you on the show because I've never seen anybody do what you're doing. And that means you're an innovator and you need to run with that. So, you know, take that torch and shine bright because you're the leader and we're just going to follow your lead. So, with that being said, I appreciate you coming on the Organically Blunt Show. You enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks, everybody, in chat. We're going to pick a winner real quick, and then I'm going to cut to the outro. So with that being said, let's pick a winner of this week's contest. And it'll be coming across in the chat, guys. Here we go. And it looks like Green Man is the weekly seed partner bounty winner. And that is will come to you directly from me. So, Green Man, shoot me a DM. Let me know that you won um, with your address and all the information, and I will get that out in the mail to you probably tomorrow afternoon. So, I appreciate all of you. Once again, thanks again, and stay organically blunt. Have a great evening, everybody. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. As we close this chapter of Organically Blunt, immense gratitude to our exceptional partners who fuel our growth journey. Seedsman Genetics, the seasoned seed bank with over two decades of experience. Grow Bag, your trusted storage solution to protect turps. Gorilla Grow Tent, crafting spaces for cultivating dreams. Kind LEDs, illuminating your green haven. Country roots, soil, and amendments, nutrient roots for success. Atlas Seeds, a source of pure genetic treasures. Green Wolf Genetics, creators of botanic magic. Smoke and Stork Genetics, where passion meets potency. Humboldt Seed Company, committed to cultivating excellence. Extreme Gardening, elevating your gardening game. Rain Science Grow Bags, redefining plants' homes. 420 Fast Buds, pioneers of fast and furious growth. Captain Redbeard Seeds, sailing the seas of genetic innovation. Arrow Mixer, the rheumatic heartbeat of your grow. Petra Tools, your trusted garden companions. Sow Fem Genetics, sowing seeds of fems and build a soil. Building the foundation of your organic oasis. Lost Close Plant Therapy, healing and enhancing plant vitality. Unlock these exclusive deals with coupon code organically blunt at checkout. Until our next episode, stay connected and keep growing and as always, stay organically blunt.